Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 58 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're gonna continue the work that we're doing on our custom contact form. In the previous lesson, we took care of uh, the front-end functionality of our contact form. So hooking a jQuery action to submit the form, collect all the information and send it with an Ajax request all the uh, data that we uh, need to store in our database to our custom sunset save contact function. Right now, the only thing that we have to do in order to make this thing work, we have to use the WP insert post function and native built-in function of WordPress that allows us to save a post in our database without using some weird uh, SQL row query or something like that. We can use all these uh, magical information that are coming with this function. Before using this function, we have to create an array of all the data that we want to save. So let's delete this echo that I was using before and then let's create an array of arguments and you can name the variable whatever you want. In my case, I'm going to use the variable args because it's pretty standard. The variable args is going to be equal to an array. So this is an array of arguments. The first attribute of our array, it's post underscore title. And the post title, it's going to be equal with arrow to the variable title pretty easy. Basically, we have to do all these things for all the information that we have. So let's write in another line. Actually, let's put a comma, not a semicolon, because it's an array of attributes. And the second attribute is the post underscore content. And the post content is going to be equal, of course, to the message that our user wrote. Now we have to save the post author. The post author usually when we save something in the backend is the actual current author that it's writing, but we cannot use uh, the current author. We cannot check the ID of the current author because a user could be not logged in, could be just a random user that doesn't have the author saved, it doesn't have anything in the database. So let's by default put one. One is the default ID of the admin user, that the user that you create by default when you install WordPress for the first time. So it, we're pretty safe to declare that one. Actually here we have an error, a mistake. Let's write array and let's wrap these into regular brackets. Um, I changed these because when you use the uh, curly brackets, basically you have just a list of value. These instead is a, a, an associative array where you have key and value. And in order to declare an associative array, you have to use the keyword array and open the regular brackets. So don't use the curly brackets. The last parameter that we have to save is the email. But if you remember, if we access our backend, our administration panel of WordPress, and we access one of the fake contact posts that I saved, here we have the meta key of the user email address. And this is a unique meta key that is not a default meta key of WordPress. It's something that we created specifically for this post type. Also, this is not a post but it's a custom post type. If we access here is the sunset content custom post type. So we have to specify that we want to save this post inside our custom post type with this custom meta key that we created. So let's do this. First of all, let's declare the post type. Then it's going to be equal to our sunset dash contact that is the unique name ID of our custom post type. Just to be sure, let's access our custom post type file and let's check the sunset contact post type. And it's here, the register post type sunset contact. And then we can check what type of meta key we saved. In our case is the contact email of the contact form. And if we scroll down, we have our function that creates this meta box called contact underscore email. So let's copy this unique ID and let's use it here to declare a 
another attribute here that is going to be the meta input and the meta input is an array of all the meta keys meta attributes that we declare and we want to save in our custom post type so in our case we have to declare the meta key called contact email that is going to be equal to our email variable that we just saved and that's it. Pretty much we have everything. Now this variable, this array of arguments, holds all the information necessary to save this custom post contact form. And in order to do that, we have to inject this arguments variable inside the function. Finally, we can use the WP insert post. And here we can use the arguments. Basically, this function, what it does is using all these arguments to activate the save post function of WordPress, saving these and it returns by default the ID of the new post that has been generated, that has been saved. So in order to check if this function was successful, we can simply store it inside a variable called post ID maybe and uh, let's equal so now we can check if the post ID it's empty it means that this function wasn't successful because no post was created if the post ID is different from empty or zero it means that a new post was created and we have a positive answer and we can return a positive answer to the user another thing that we could do with this function is activating the WP error um, second attribute WP underscore error. Basically, this WP error returns only if this function fails. And by default, I'm not activating this because I'm coding this ready for production. Basically, uh, we're going to be ready to release it. If you're developing and you're planning to develop for a lot of time, I suggest you to leave it open because this variable having it here will tell this function to return the WordPress error, to return the string with the error in case there's an error. Because if we don't specify anything, the return of this function is going to be zero. If we specify the WP error, we're going to have the entire string of the error, the failure of what happened, why it went wrong. This is good when you're coding, when you're developing and you're in a staging environment. This is not good when you're in a production environment. So when your website is public, you don't want to return the entire string with the entire error written down on your website. You just want to return zero and you know that you can handle the zero because you're coding something to handle the zero. So for now, let's just leave it there. But just so you know, you can use that WP error to return a more precise, a more understandable understandable error messages, something goes wrong. This episode is brought to you by HostGator, the powerful, easy and affordable web hosting. If you're confused by virtual hosts, server settings and database configurations, HostGator is the solution for you with 24-7 support, award-winning tools and one-click script install options. Get your own domain today and use the promo code HALICAD to get 25% off. So now we could check if this post ID is zero or not zero, if it's a number, and we could return something here. But I want to handle this type of return in the jQuery, not inside my uh, PHP. So the only thing that I want to do, I want to just echo this post ID. And of course, I could potentially echo directly this function because I know this function returns only zero or the post ID, but storing this function inside a variable and then returning a variable is a cleaner way to uh, maintain better the code. If we want to do something in the future with this variable, we already have everything and it's, it's pretty easy to do it. So let's save it. Let's go back in our JavaScript where we have our Ajax function and then we have error console in case we have an error. Of course, we will not know if it's an error if we don't activate the WP error. But in success, when the call is successful, we're going to have the response. The response is going to be just the post ID. So here we can check with a simple if statement. So if response is identical to zero, we can for now just as a test console log enable to save your message. Please try again later. Let's do this. <laughs> Else console log message saved. 
Thank you. Save it. Let's go back in our front end and let's refresh a lot because we change all the functionality in the back end. So be sure that our cache it's completely fresh and new. And let's write a message. Alex, email. This is a fantastic website. Congratulations. And submit. We have the correct call. We are passing all the correct parameters and the response. We don't have any response because we didn't return or echo anything from our PHP, but we're handling everything in JavaScript. If we access the console, we're gonna have the congratulation message save. Thank you, perfect. So now if we access inside our backend, there you go, look what we have here. We have Alex with the message. We have the name of the user as the post title. We have the message inside the content. The author is set to admin, but we don't have the email address as a meta box because probably we did something wrong. Also another thing to notice, you notice that this post is set to draft because we didn't specify the type of publishing status of the post. So in this case, WordPress, if you don't declare the status of the post that we want to save is going to automatically put it to draft. We don't want this, we want this to be automatically published because whatever, we don't care, it's not we are, we're printing the front end all these posts, we need to know, we need to have it published automatically and also we need to fix the issue that we have here with our email. So let's do that. Let's go back in our ajax.php and first we have to change the status of this post and here we can add another attribute called post underscore status and of course we want the status to be published and comma pretty easy the other thing is the meta input and i guess the error for this is i actually declared the wrong meta key if we access here the custom post type declaration if we scroll down the post meta it's actually the contact email value key also here is not published sorry that's a typo it's just publish it's not published if we declare um post status that doesn't exist the post will not be saved or it's gonna be saved but it's not gonna be reachable in our backend so that's kind of bad let's remember this let's save it let's go back in our front end let's refresh couple of times just to be sure we're clearing the cache and we're not causing any issues and let's send another message to our contact form contact for message test submit correct submission of the form the console message saved let's go back in our backend let's refresh the messages and now we have alex with the contact form message and the custom email properly saved in our custom meta key and that's perfect there you go this is how you save some data from the front end into the back end into a unique custom post type if we access the post just to check you will notice we don't have any type of post that we wrote because everything has been saved inside our custom post type. And this is perfect. This function is really easy to use. We have a bunch of arguments. I suggest you to check the official documentation of WordPress to see all the other values, all the other attributes that you can declare inside the arguments and how to properly use them to customize your WP insert post saving function. In the next lesson, we're gonna do a bunch of cool things. First of all, we're gonna take care of the front end to make it look slightly better and having better inputs like error inputs or success inputs whenever a user does something. Plus, we wanna use the built-in email functionality of WordPress to send an email to the administrator, in our case, myself, in order to get a notification every time a user sends us a message through the contact form. And maybe if we can do it also attaching the same message inside the email that we're sending, that would be pretty handy. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoy. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.